Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. What do you know it? We're in the month of May, and I just turned 34 since Thursday, May 2nd. Yep, I just uh, had a, uh, <laughs> a birthday uh, breakfast at Denny's. Built your own Grand Slam with pancakes, French toast, uh, sausage, you know, hash browns, and a drink to go with it. <laughs> it was really appetizing. Of course, I also had to continue with my physical therapy as well as my cycling class during the day. But I also continue to buy some more movies um, at Best Buy, Walmart, and even Five Below. So I got several titles so far 12 Blu rays plus one DVD. But I am going to continue to get some more later on when I celebrate my birthday you know, during the weekend of Saturday and Sunday. And as I'm reviewing this, today is Saturday. And I'm going to see um, the movie I've been anticipating for a while now. Yes, right here. Avengers Endgame. <laughs> I might see another movie too, as well. So we'll see. But I'm definitely having an awesome birthday so far. And it's going to continue to go on during the week. So, one of the movies I picked up, which I've been wanting to look for for a while now, and I finally found it, is Looper, with Bruce Willis, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Emily Blunt, which is written and directed by Ryan Johnson, yes, <laughs> the same director who also did, as we speak, Star Wars The Last Jedi, which was a disappointment, but it did have its moments. But he also uh, wrote and directed a movie called Brick, also with Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and even did The Brothers Bloom. But this is his best work, no doubt about it. Um, it's a story about, uh, which is around during the pleasant day, where a criminal syndicate had hired loopers, one of them being the Joe, who's the younger self of him, who winds up uh, terminating uh, all the victims that are being sent back through time. And basically, he's tracking down his future self, which happens to be the you know, older Joe, that's Bruce Willis. And yes, this Blu-ray does have features. And <laughs> well, you can see what the disc looks like, where you can see on top, yeah, Justin Gordon Levitt, and on the bottom, <laughs> Bruce Willis. And it almost looks like uh, <laughs> a bit of a uh, fog right there. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, the movie stars Justin Gordon Levitt with Bruce Willis, Emily Blunt, Paul Dano, Frank Benham. Noah Sagan, Piper Perepo, you know, from the live-action CGI animated film The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle in 2000, as well as, uh, yeah, Coyote Ugly. Mm. Jeff Daniels, Pierce Gadnon, Summer Keen, and Nick Gomez, and is written and directed by Ryan Johnson. The movie began set in Kansas City in 2044. We meet a young man who's 25 years old named Joe, who's played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who works at a crime syndicate simply known as a looper, seeing that time travel ha hasn't been invented until 30 years later, but was considered to be illegal. So. Future track systems uh, have made it near impossible to dispose of all the bodies around. And it's being managed by a future man named Abe, who's played by Jeff Daniels. Which, their job was to kill and dispose face conceived victims, and they're being paid with silver bars that's being strapped to the target. But to prevent all the connections to the syndicate, a looper's final victim will be their retired future self, which are being identified by having gold bars on their backs that strap to them, which ending their contract 
and closing the loop. Joe's friend named Seth, played by uh, Paul Dano, is part of a minority that manifests a low-level telekinesis, which confides that his old self has escaped after warning him about a person in the future called the Rainmaker, who's overthrown by five major bosses around, and they decided to close all the loops. So Joe silently hides uh, Seth in his apartment, but was being taken by Kid Blue, you know, from Abe, who's played by uh, Noah Segon, who happens to be one of uh, Abe's uh, got men. So Joe reveals Seth's location instead of forfeiting the silver, uh, and Abe's men decide to cut an address into the younger Seth's arm, so that way they'll be able to search for it. Seemingly affects um, old self, which he goes to address and once again killed. And yes, this is where his older self suddenly changes, starting to become a skeleton. And he's starting to fall apart uh, really easily too. So Joe's next target uh, arrives, which turns out to be his older self. And that's older Joe, played by Bruce Willis. Which is uncovered and hands up bound. But before Joe was ready to kill him, just when he went back to the spot, uh, all the gold that's strapped in on the back, old Joe suddenly shields himself, knocks him unconscious, and just ran away. Escaping just to find uh, what's just to find what's happening, and and he's also um, ready to kill. Of course, um, returning to his apartment, uh, Joe, young Joe actually fights with Kid Blue, only to fall off of the fire uh, escape and blacked out. But in another timeline. Young Joe suddenly kills his older self as he arrives, but he wants up moving to Shanghai where he was dealing with his drug addiction that was going around and then he continues to become a hitman, started killing everyone, and suddenly meets a, a beautiful woman who later got married and, and it happens to be uh, simply Joe's wife. It doesn't explain the, her name, but, but anyway, she's played by Summer uh, Kim. They just refer to her as uh, Joe's wife. So, but unfortunately, she got killed uh, just when the, all the, uh, but suddenly she got killed by the Rainmaker, who just took him and was ready to strap in inside uh, the time machine which that's what lead to what, what was going to happen uh, for years uh, into the past where he'll be able to spot his younger self which of course they both met at the diner they're trying to explain about what was happening dealing with their situations going around you know just before a kid blue just before they started they shoot out with each other until kid blue arrives uh, along with the rest of his game and they escape but then su suddenly um, Joe had went straight uh, into the, the cornfields and that's when um, he spotted the um, an independent woman a farmer who has a son, Sarah, played by Emily Blunt. So, Joe actually follows the map to the farm, and uh, that's when he did spot it, Sarah and, and her son, Sid. And Sid, of course, is played by um, Pierce uh, Gadnon. So, Sarah recognized a number of, on the map 
as Sid's birthday, which is also a hospital code. So, so Joe guessed that, uh, that his old self is going to kill all three children around that are born on the same day, not knowing which one will become the rainmaker. So he decided to stay in the farm until Jesse, who was part of the Got Man, had arrived and was about to track down Joe. But Joe and Sid suddenly hide um, all the way down into the basement and was about to escape, you know, before uh, Jesse leaves. There, there's also a twist in the movie where we begin to learn about. Uh, Sarah's uh, son, which turns out that he has telekinesis, which we begin to see that in the scene where she was about to, uh, you know, just play a, a puzzle game, you know, with all the, which is basically a math puzzle, trying to explain the the numbers, and and this is where. Sid got the answer, which is the number 32. But he thought maybe, you know, Joe actually put all that stuff in, in his head, but it wasn't. And this is where he, he, he was in rage, he was screaming. That's when, that's when the entire room was ready to, uh, to freeze and was ready to go all the way up and ready to attack her. So she had to go all the way straight into the safe to hide. His older self just wants up tracking down the Susie. He was living in an apartment and was ready to actually kill her, which also lead to the same day where in the morning uh, Jesse suddenly uh, was ready to held uh, Sarah at gunpoint. Just when the, he arrived, he was telling her about the address, and then by the time Sid fell, that's when the, he actually caused an eruption to happen, just to uh, to escape. And yeah, he Sid actually fell down the stairs, and this is where he uses his telekinesis powers and to actually take Jesse and kills him as it explodes you know, with blood actually going straight into his face as he ran away into the cornfield and, and then Joe actually found him but they know they're not going to be safe once uh, his older self arrives and was ready to uh, to go after the kid Sid since he already had killed everyone else and trying to save his life. Which, it could be a lot complicated as it seems. It is an excellent and awesome sci-fi action thriller that pushes the boundaries all the way through. I mean, think about it. I mean, having your younger self be able to track down your older self you know, before things can get a lot further and how you begin to change everything that happens in the past will suddenly uh, continues to go on in the future. Yeah, and it could be a scary thing too. And I mean, think about it. I mean, will he be able to close the loop once he be able to track down his older self? Pretty much. But What's really fascinating though was that young Joe actually uses that gun barrel uh, shotgun that he has where he can actually shoot them all the way straight once the, the victim shows up um, that's already uh, laying on the ground at uh, in the farmland with, filled with the cornfields around. I mean this is really fascinating. And that way he can collect uh, all the loot and be able to, you know, spend his uh, entire dream, you know, going through all these bars and where he begins to meet uh, his first lover, Susie, and it was a dancer, yeah. And 
And I, I love how they really um, work for that level too. The diner scene was very memorable where we get to see both his younger and older self face to face and they get to talk about their situations you know in order to actually save his life as it seems but it can get pretty complicated as it shows seeing that his older self is in love and married his uh, Chinese wife in Shanghai even though he has continued to become a hitman, a killer, you know, killing everyone around until his wife just tells him that I could never love a killer and, and just gave up and just spend her time together before something bad happens. Once the Rainmaker comes and, and uh, take him straight to the, the time machine and then they killed his wife and, and hoping maybe there's a way that they could fix that if they can but that's possible um, there's even a deleted scene uh, if you watch it on the blu-ray there's a scene where just when the, his older self was about to go after uh, Susie that he spotted and not to mention killing all the three children who happens to be the Rainmakers. So just to stop everything from happening. Um, you begin to see like flashbacks of him you know, with his wife. And you begin to notice that just when he was starting to do some major changes here. You notice that uh, a cloud of, of fog starts to shoot up at the background. Try, trying to erase her, all of his memories that he has of her, and you begin to see uh, his clock, which has a picture of her, it starts to appear and reappear, and I thought that was very fascinating to actually see what time changes, I mean, it's, you know, how, you know, you, you know, you have to change the past or you have to change the future in, in that sort of way, but it just keeps on going very fast. I wish that scene was in the movie if it wasn't cut out, but I, I understand. It's because of time. But for the performances, uh, Joseph Gore Levitt definitely gave it a stellar performance uh, playing Joe as his younger self, trying to look exactly like... Um, Bruce Willis by giving prosthetic makeup, but of course I know he doesn't look alike, but he was trying to make him look exactly like how he's going to look um, later on for years from now. And then they're trying to give him some mannerisms to make him sound exactly like him. You know? So that's why they had to put all that prosthetic makeup, you know, trying all the way between the, the mouth, the chin, uh, the eyebrows, uh, the eyes, so it's almost like he's like a whole different person. <laughs> Something I didn't expect. Um, Bruce Willis was also very good in this movie too. He really um, topped it off too. Even though he's, he is playing a different role and not something like uh, <laughs> John McClane or or any other action star role that he's given. Uh, Emily Blunt was also very good too. Uh, just playing a farmer who was very tough, independent, given a uh, a sudden accent because even though she's a British actress, because uh, even though she's an English actress. Um, she really uh, pulled it through. Paul Dano, even for a small role as Seth, uh, he was also uh, excellent too. Uh, Nora Segon uh, as Kit Blue was uh, was one of those guys who, yeah, at times you know he was just going around tracking down, yeah, 
his younger self and then later his older self just so he can get you know, the money that he wants. Yeah, it's, it's your typical character. Uh, Jeff Daniels, um, sort of like the boss of the syndicate because he's, you know, he owns everything here. Uh, very stellar too. It's great to see him. Uh, along with uh, Piper Perupo as Susie, you know, which is Joe's, um, I guess you can say his first lover before uh, he met uh, his wife three years later. Or, or more to which he met his wife uh, in Shanghai uh, a few, couple years later as he grew older. So, it has a stellar cast right there. Um, some great action scenes. Uh, they did use practical effects all the way. I love how they started using all the floating of, like, for example, the scene where, where Sarah actually was smoking a cigarette and, and she actually took the lighter and she was, like, floating around in the bedroom. I love that scene. Or I, I know they were... I know all the other guys um, working... For the syndicate, we're actually using all these floating uh, <laughs> uh, coins and any other objects, so they just float around. Because so they're using like a bit of zero gravity in there. I thought that was really clever. And um, they did use uh, some CGI effects on some of the movements here and there, but but most of which is pretty practical. But it's a very well done, and and Ryan Johnson definitely knocked it right out the park when he wrote and directed this, and he really did a, an amazing job at the time when he knows how to write and direct a, a fascinating story. I mean, it's just sad that nowadays he's just trolling. I mean, okay, I, yeah, what what was going on with the Last Jedi these days? I mean, that's sad, because this was his best work. It really was. Um, it was a big hit, too, at the box office. Um, out of its 30 million budget, this movie sets for, it only made $17, 6500000 million, so surprisingly it was a hit. Um, yeah, it was too bad that uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's um, previous film before this uh, actually flopped, which was Premier Rush. And that was another awesome movie that he did. Pretty underrated, too. Um, but it was definitely a good year for Joseph Gordon-Levitt anyway. I mean, even after The Dark Knight Rises, I mean, he got to do two good films to join in. Definitely his best year. And it also proves that, you know, he's He's an awesome actor. He pushed no boundaries whatsoever, and he really shows that he can actually nail it right to the feet. <laughs> and that's why I love him. So, yeah. And uh, another thing about Looper, though, was that I love the concept of time travel and all this um, other con consistence and and loops and everything that went for it even though it can get complicated but at times like this it can really blend in with with tons of action and it just works so I was impressed so anyway that's Looper and I give the movie five stars I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later bye